class, I'm Dr. April Strom, and in today's video, what we are going to explore is how to find the derivative of natural log x. I'm gonna leverage some ideas of inverse functions and also composition of functions to be able to tackle this one. And essentially, we are going to prove what the derivative of natural log of x is. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a reminder about inverse functions. And one of the characteristics that is quite interesting about inverse functions is that when I take an inverse function and compose it with the original function, I get back exactly the argument, the input that I started with. And even if I compose in the other order, f of f inverse of x, I still get back the argument, the x, or whatever is the input into that function. So this is a characteristic of inverse functions that again, if I have a function and it's inverse, it doesn't matter what order I put it in, in terms of the composing, I always return the argument, the input back as my result when I do that composition. Okay. All right, so we are going to try to tackle the derivative of f of x equals natural log x. And so my approach here is, let's see if we can come up with first what the inverse of natural log x is. I want to know what f inverse of x is going to be when I have natural log x as the original function. If I know and can find what the inverse of f of x is, then maybe I can do some sort of composition idea to help me explore then what the derivative is going to be. So one thing we have to remember is that Logarithms in general are highly connected to exponential functions. And in this case, I have the natural logarithm of base e, right? The exponential e that's sitting here. We don't write it because we write ln instead. But you can imagine there's like a little base e hanging out here. And that helps us because what I'm gonna do now, in order to find this inverse function of natural log x, I'm going to rearrange this into what we call exponential form, because right now clearly it's in log form, natural log form specifically. So its inverse is going to be when I write that function as an exponential, and that written as an exponential is simply the base that I had over here, e to the x as my new input. So we're not gonna have to write this little e, I just put that there as a reminder because what we're gonna visually see is natural log x is the function, e to the x is its inverse. Okay, so now what I would like to do is use some sort of composition to help us tackle this derivative. So I'm gonna compose these two functions together. And I think what I'll do is I'll use the first statement here, f inverse of f of x equals x. Let me use this one right here. It doesn't really matter. Again, I could have gone in the other order and composed in the opposite order and still get the same answer as my result of that composition. But let's just go one direction here. So I'm gonna find what f inverse of f of x is going to be when these two functions are my actual functions. Um, I have now f inverse, that's my outside function. f of x is my inside function. Let's start there. We have f inverse of that inside function, natural log x. And what this tells me do, to do is take natural log x and put it inside the function e to the x. So when I tackle that, I now have, well, instead of e to the x, I'm going to have e to the natural logarithm of x written this way, and I know that looks crazy to write it that way, but that's exactly what we have when we embed one function into the other, and when we have the natural log of x function into the e to the x function, this is the result, e to the natural log x. Well, if I come back over here and I realize that when I compose an inverse with its function, I should get back x as a result. So we can actually replace this notation on the left side here, simplify that to say this should result in just x itself via this little characteristic of inverses. So now I have the equation x equals e to the natural log x. 
All I've done so far is actually used inverses to compose and write a new statement. Now what I'm gonna do is actually take its derivative. So I'm gonna find the derivative of both sides of this equation. And this is my notation I'm gonna use. I'm gonna find the derivative of the left side of the equation, d dx, and I will also find the derivative, d dx, of the right side of that equation. Because again, whatever I can do or need to do to one side of the equation, I'm allowed to do to the other side. So we go here, starting on the left, derivative of just x, well, that's just one, that's great. So one is equal to, on the right-hand side, when I try to take the derivative of e to the natural log x, well, that's a composition here of functions that results in a chain rule. I need to find the derivative here of the outside function, which is my e to whatever power. And so it turns out when I find the derivative of e to the whatever power, that's just going to be the e to the whatever power back again. So I have something written this way. So I have e to the natural log x, but via the chain rule, I have a second part to this where I now have to multiply by the derivative of natural log x. So here, natural log x, its derivative is actually the thing I'm trying to find. It's the thing that I don't know that I hope I can be able to explore and figure out. All right, so another little piece here that we might hopefully recognize. When you look at the e to the natural log x, again, we have a little e sitting right here as a base on that natural log. Well, it turns out via the what we call the one-to-one -one property, in this case of exponentials and logs, when the base here matches the base here, we actually return just the argument right back out. So this piece right here alone is equal to just the argument, which in our case is x. So it turns out every time we have e to the natural log of x, that whole quantity is simply reduced to just x. I still have my one on the left-hand side. I still have the thing that I don't know right here, which is this natural log x and its derivative. But now cleverly, what we can now do is say, if this is the thing that I wanna know, the natural log x's derivative, all I have to do since I'm multiplying is divide by x on both sides of this equation. I'll divide by x here on the right side, as well as the left side. This x divides out with this, this x in the denominator, and what results now is the natural logarithm of x is derivative is equal to simply one over x. And now I have my rule for every time I need to find the derivative of natural log x will always return one over x. And so in my next video, what we'll do is look at an example of how this rule here, our new natural log x rule, gets applied when we're trying to find the derivative involving a natural log x.